In this video, we're going to take a look at Ferris Wheel Press Bluegrass Velvet. Let's jump straight to the end with my opinion on this ink. The tone of this ink is very affected by the nib or the pen that you put it in. It can give some shading under the right circumstances. Most of the cost of this ink, though, is in the packaging. And while I like when inks have very interesting names and interesting packaging, I do feel that it needs to be a bit more practical. The ball-like bottle that I have is very prone to tipping over, and that means it has to stay inside its box while I'm filling it. Also, I find that the neck itself is very narrow, making it difficult to fill from. So I don't have a problem with the ink itself per se, but its cost is much higher than it should be simply because of the package. And while I enjoy seeing things really made to look good, I do think that too much was put into the aesthetic here and that that price could come down some. I'll use up the bottle that I have, but I don't see myself running to get more of their ink. I like to change things up by using a different pen each day. Today that pen is a Pilot Metropolitan with a medium nib. It's inked up, used for a day, and used to take the notes for this video. To see how I arrived at that opinion, let's take a look at the first writing sample done on Claire Fontaine. Looking at the fine, which is actually an extra fine, we see that it's darker than the heading, which is a drier medium. The fine has a decent tone. It does offer a bit of shading throughout. Like if you look at the word unspeakables or decides, it's very noticeable the amount of tone variation that you can get. We have no feathering. We have no spread. When looking at the medium, it's noticeably darker than the extra fine, and yet the shading shows itself much better in this medium. I think the flow of this medium is working out just perfectly with the size of the nib. We're not getting any kind of feathering or spread. Really, a nice performance here looks best on this page with that president. The double broad, which obviously I don't write much for with notes, it has no feather and no spread. It does offer some tone variation, which is very nice. I like the word shipwreck where we get some very dark letters. It's performing very nicely here. As we can expect with the Clairefontaine, we get no bleeding and no ghosting. 
To have a range of experience with this ink, all of the writing samples are done with a Jinhao X750 with a fine nib. A Pierre Cardin president with a medium nib. A Pelican M205, the duo highlighter, with a double broad nib. The next writing sample is done on Leustrom 1917 paper. Looking at the extra fine at the top, we have no feather, no spread. We only get the tiniest bits of shading, not tons, but there are a few darker spots that show themselves throughout the letters. Again, no feathering or spread, which is nice. It is here just a plain turquoise to me. It's nothing standing out any better. Looking at the medium, it's a little darker than the extra fine. Not as much shading is coming through on this paper. We have no feather and no spread. And again, it's coming across just as a turquoise, nothing special. The double broad, we get a much lighter tone than the medium as its general with only a couple spots of shading. Now that wasn't the pen running dry at the word irrational. What actually happened is I turned the nib and that was a me problem, not an ink or pen problem. We're getting no feathering and no spreading there with the double broad, which is very nice. Looking at the back of the page, we see that we get some minor ghosting, but no bleeding at all, so fantastic. I agree with Vita. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The next writing sample is done on moleskin paper. The extra fine on this paper is performing just as well as it did on the Leustrom. We have no feather, we have no spread, we do get some shading. It still just looks like just a turquoise here. Not anything from me that's gotta have it, although I have a bottle. No feather and no spread, good performance. The medium has no feather, no spread. It's a little bit darker in tone than the extra fine. And the shading is definitely showing itself a bit better than the extra fine. While it was there on the top writing, it's better with the medium here. I even think though it's just a turquoise, I think it being slightly darker, just a tad bit darker, crosses, crosses the threshold to make it a bit nicer. Now the double broad is by far the lightest tone on the page. There is some light feathering throughout all of this. There's no spread, that's a double broad, so it's a ginormous nib. And there is little bits of shading, but it's less interesting as a tone from the double broad.
Looking at the back of the page, we get to see that there's no bleeding and only minor ghosting. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. This smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. And here we see the results of the resistance test. The next writing sample is done in a composition notebook. The extra fine on this paper is performing very nicely with no feather and no spread. It only has minor spots of shading that are coming through, although you would mostly be using this for taking some notes, perhaps in a lab. So it's doing very well there. It's not having any kind of problem. I do think the shading is a little nicer here than we saw on the Leustrom, although it's not a lot when it's there, it is nice. Once again, what we're getting is the medium has a bit of a darker tone, and with that darker tone, we're getting little bits of shading, but I don't think the shading is as nice. We're getting more of it, but I don't think it's coming through as nicely as we did on some other papers. And I kind of prefer it in the extra fine to this medium in what we're seeing. The double broad is, as it has been, much lighter than we're getting with the medium or the extra fine. It has no shading, no feathering, no spread. Really, really good performance on this paper. Looking at the back of the page, we see that there is some minor ghosting, not a big deal, probably doesn't stop you from using the back of the page, but absolutely no bleeding. With over a thousand inks reviewed, let's take a look at some color comparables. Here is Diamine Teal. Here is Jeherban Diablo Ment. Here is Lamy Turquoise. Here is Robert Oster Turquoise. The next writing sample is done in a Mead 5 Star Notebook. The extra fine in this student notebook has no feathering and no spread, which I'm fairly happy with. It has no shading, which I think is okay given the nature of how cheap the paper's made. The medium is a bit darker. It also has a little bit of feathering that's going on, tiny, not worth pointing out as a don't use it kind of thing, but it's definitely there. No shading coming through in the medium. The double broad is the lightest tone on the page, as it has been this entire time. We do get some tiny feathering, but not a big deal if you look at in and you look at his. There's some spread, but 
there's two things going on. One is my handwriting for a double broad isn't as nice. Two, this is a wet double broad. So the fact that there's a little bit of spread isn't the end of the world. It's just something to be aware of. Turning the page, we get to see that there's plenty of ghosting, as would be expected. None of these spots that look like they're very deep came through and touched the back of the page. So we're not corrupting the next page, which is absolutely fantastic. While it's nice to find other inks in the same color family, I'd prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. Here is a black ink by Noodler's Raven's Black. Here is a brown ink by KWZ, brown number three. Here is a brown ink by Tag in the Cayo Iro line, Stone Road of Guion. Here is a magenta ink by Robert Oster, their copper. If you'd prefer different complement colors, then there's links to those different playlists down in the description. Or you can click on my face. That'll take you to my channel page. Then click on the playlist tab. Scrolling down, you'll be able to see all of the playlists that are here on the channel. The last writing sample is done on 20 pound copy paper. The extra fine has some spread that goes on it, but not horrible. It's just a little bit larger than a fine. But the thing that is noticeable to me is there's a lot of tiny feathering. Not the end of the world if you're forced to use this cheap paper. But it is there, so if it's something you're going to care about, you're going to want to know. Now, we're not getting any kind of shading with this. The medium is darker, so if we look just at the solid tones, I prefer the solid tone that's coming from the extra fine over the medium. The medium has spread a bit more. It's spread to about a broad. It has tiny feathering the entire way through. Again, cheap paper and no shading. The medium is lighter than the medium. The double broad is lighter than the medium. It has spread quite a bit of it. It has feathering, only tiny feather the entire way, giving it a slightly blurry look. No shading at all, but still fairly good for the paper. When we look at the other side, we see that I circled dots where it did touch the page underneath. Now, it did touch the page with the extra fine, with the medium, and expected with the broad. Not the end of the world again, but it does come through. It does corrupt the page underneath. There is tons of ghosting, which means you couldn't use the back of the page if you needed to. So what nib and pen do I think is going to give the best writing experience with this ink? I don't care for the dark tone from a wet pen. So for me, I would say to go with a drier pen regardless of its nib size. Now, I think the drier fine looks better than the other ones. And I'm saying that based on using the Metropolitan with a medium. So it writes like a Western fine, but this one is a little bit drier than some of the other pens I have. From a dryer fine, I really do like the tone and I find it pleasurable on the page. But from medium or wet pens, it gets dark to where I just think, hmm, I can't wait for this pen to run out so I can put something else in it. Thanks for watching.